Hi, I'm Dr. John Lawrence. I'm a chiropractic neurologist and a naturopathic physician. And I've been treating inner ear conditions for the last 10 years, and I'm particularly interested in tinnitus, hearing loss, and balance disorders. And there's not a lot of answers in modern medicine for these conditions, which particularly attracted me to these types of problems that can be absolutely life-altering. So my name is Dr. John Lawrence. I'm a chiropractic neurologist and a naturopath. And um, I've been working in the field of treating the disorders of the um, neurology, the brain, the ears, the nose, the sinuses um, for a long time. And I'll tell you how I got kind of involved with that is um, when, I was, um, when I was young, I broke my nose and I couldn't breathe through one side of my nostril for many, many years. And um, when I was in chiropractic school, um, I remember the, this as if it was yesterday. Um, I was a student, and we're, we're in the lecture hall, and I'm having a conversation between classes with one of the other students, and he starts telling me about this technique using endonasal balloons to adjust the plates of the skull. And he's explaining this to me, and I can't tell you why, but intuitively I was just like, this is something that will really help me. It was, fast forward, I'm out of practice um, about a year and a half, and I'm in Miami, and I'm at a neurology conference, and same thing, it was between lectures. The, um, the student said, there's a doctor two rows up that does this endonasal treatment. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta meet this guy, right? And so I go and I meet the, this, this doctor, and he'd been doing um, these types of adjustments for, for quite some time. And so um, I, uh, I was lucky enough to be able to receive this adjustment and it completely opened up one, that one side of my nasal passage that was clogged. But I started to have patients come to me for this technique for conditions um, such as vertigo, Meniere's disease, tinnitus, hyperacusis, which is sensitivity to hearing, and hearing loss. I would see a lot of these patients. And I was having some results with what I was up to, but at the time, it really wasn't at the robust results that I wanted. And I had a patient that came in to see me with Meniere's, and for those of you that don't know what Meniere's disease is, it's three symptoms all, at one, all in one. It's usually a result of a viral infection in the inner ear. Usually, people are dizzy, they have tinnitus, and they have hearing loss. Okay? And there's no treatment for it. Um, I had been getting a lot of experience with, with treating these diseases. I had this lady come in to see me. I treated her for many years, and she got great results with her balance, minimal results with her hearing, and minimal results with her tinnitus. So she persevered, and she found a doctor in Germany, and this doctor's name is Dr. Amon Kaiser. This is him on the left, Dr. Kaiser you got to go see Dr. Kaiser because if you learn this treatment he's doing and you put it together with what you're already doing, you're going to have the best treatment on the planet for things like Meniere's and the inner ear and so forth. And so um, I took her up on it and I went over there and I, I called him up and he was very gracious to have me come over and visit with him for a little short time. And he happened to be very interested to find the right doctor in the United States to train with this technique because they had only trained one other doctor him and, his, and so he was very interested to um, have me come back so I went back to Germany and I took the training um, this is about three years ago and so it's been about three years now and we've been doing this treatment and basically the crux of the treatment is laser treatment these are the lasers they're um, they're not your typical laser that you'll find in many doctor's offices because they're extremely expensive. So I was featured uh, two years ago, almost three now, on ABC News. This was shortly after I, I did my training. And so let's talk about the anatomy of the ears. Some of this stuff you guys may already know, but um, the main part of the inner ear that is responsible for hearing is the cochlea, which is like a conch shell type of uh, structure. It's very small. Sound comes in through the ear canal and 
it's magnified with this the eardrum and the, uh, the the bones in the inner ear, and then that pressure from that from that sound is then transmitted in through these different tubes. And if you look inside the tube, you have these this area right here, which they call the spiral organ of corti. You don't need to remember all this stuff, but so the hair cells are the actual little cell that's in these that's in this in this collection of tubes and if you cut if you cut the tube in half this is what you see here and it's these hair cells that are catching the movement of this membrane the tectorial membrane and that's how we perceive sound and the high frequency sounds are primarily transmitted through this outer area where the lower ones are deeper in. So that kind of makes sense why we start to lose our high frequency hearing because the sound hits that first so it's stressed more than the, the, the ones that are protected on the inside. Now this is going to be important later in the talk. These are called supporting cells. So these are supporting cells, and then you have the hair cells, which are then connected to a nerve. Okay? And then this is a micron's um, uh, microscope, electron microscope of hair cells, and that's what they look like in real life. Pretty cool, huh? So what are some of the causes of hearing loss? Well. Aging, having birthdays, number one. Number two, ototoxicity. There's a lot of chemicals and even, um, we'll show you a list of different drugs and medications, some of them even just over the counter, can be ototoxic, meaning that when you take it, it causes a toxic effect where hair cells die. Not good. Um, ex excessive exposure to loud noise. Um, blasts or explosions, tumors. I see a lot of people that were in the war, you know, or they just enjoyed using um, guns just recreationally. So here are some of the drugs that cause ototoxicity. Loop diuretics. So these are drugs that are given that help the body kind of get rid of extra fluid. Um, there's antibiotics, a number of them. Um, Gentamicin, if you, it, they still use it quite a bit, the hospitals, because it's cheap. Whatever you do, if you ever get hospitalized, you tell them absolutely no gentamicin. It is terribly ototoxic. Um, NSAIDs, a lot of your NSAIDs, ibuprofen and aspirin, a lot of these are ototoxic. Um, some of the things to be concerned with as we start to lose our hearing is how that's affecting the brain. Studies are showing that adults that um, start to have significant impairment um, start um, in their cognitive abilities 2. Point, I'm sorry, 3.2 years sooner than those with normal hearing. So those with hearing loss experience 30 to 40 percent greater decline in thinking ability compared to their counterparts without hearing loss. So what about dementia? Mild hearing loss is two times more likely to develop into dementia, twice. Moderate hearing loss, three times. <clears throat> Severe hearing loss, five times. So the worse the hearing, the more the brain's not being activated. And it just kind of makes sense, you know, because I think a lot of times our brain starts to work and think we're in conversation, we're kind of in the world, you know, we're, we're active, we're, we're engaging with other people. And that is activation to the brain. And so when our hearing starts to decline, then there's less activation to the brain, not such a good thing. So what about hearing aids? This is the most common uh, uh, treatment that we have for hearing loss. Do they cause more damage to the ear? So the worse your hearing gets, the louder you need the sound in order to hear it comfortably. And that could mean listening to speech or ear damaging levels, especially anything above 80 decibels. So this was a study out of the Journal of Speech, Language, and Hearing Research. 
and it says permanent threshold shift associated with over amplification by hearing aids. The sound stress could be predicted from the estimated real ear output levels of the children's hearing aids by means of effect of noise exposure on hearing. So this is right out of the study. So there was some concern some of the kids were having more hearing damage uh, based on how loud the hearing aids were amplified. This is what our recommendation, my personal opinion is that hearing aids do damage the ear. So what they'll tell you when you're getting hearing aids is they'll say that we're only going to amplify what you're having a hard time with. But it really doesn't make a big a difference because if you're amplifying, even if you don't hear it well, if you're amplifying it, that sound stress is still going in and hitting that, that area of the inner ear. Does that make sense? So if you're amplifying these various um, frequencies, then there's going to be it's going to be like basically turning the volume up on whatever's in your environment. Okay. Um, when I was out in Germany, Dr. Kaiser was very emphatic about your patients, you need to make sure that they don't wear their hearing aids as, as much as possible to get the best result with Lumamed. Because we want to try to reduce the sound stress to the inner ear. And his analogy was like if you were to twist your, your knee and you, you wanted to give your knee the opportunity to heal, you'd put a knee brace on it. And so his solution for knee brace in the knee or in the, in the ear was to put an ear plug in. So he was more of a fan of the complete opposite. And you will see some, uh, and some different books written on get, regaining your hearing, and they do talk about wearing earplugs regularly as, a, as an option. So what we recommend for our patients is that you wear um, your, your, your hearing aids prudently, and if you're in a no noisy place, turn them down or take them off, and wear earplugs instead. And um, wear your hearing aids when you want to talk to people. Otherwise, leave them off and rest your ears. All right, so what is laser therapy? How many people here by a show of hands have heard of laser therapy? <coughs> a couple. So lasers are commonly used in chiropractic offices, acupuncture, physical therapy, um, physiatrists. They're very common. And there's the cutting laser, the hot laser, which they might use for... Um, surgeries and so forth, but then there's something called cold laser. And these cold lasers are basically using something called photons, which is a small increment of energy. The sun shines photons onto the earth, and there's the full spectrum of the sun. Within that, there's a little sliver, which these wavelengths are extremely beneficial and healing to human cells and tissues. And this is what they, they, they get these machines to produce with these lasers. And they have um, a wide ranging effect. This is talking about bone formation, cartilage production, nerve regeneration, reducing inflammation and edema, collagen production, angiogenesis and neovascularization. That's huge because as we get older, we, our blood, su blood supply decreases, right? So if we can reestablish better circulation to an area, we're going to have a better option to regenerate it. Muscles, muscle atrophy. All of those have had studies showing that laser has a positive effect on them. So another word for laser is photobiomodulation. So if we break that na name down, photo meaning light, bio meaning you know, biology, cells, and then modulation. It is a light therapy using lasers or to improve tissue regeneration, improve circulation, reduce pain and inflammation wherever the beam is applied. Over 700 randomized clinical trials have been published on photobiomodulation, so it's been heavily researched and, and very well proven. And the mitochondria is found in all of the cells of your body. And in fact, if you were to just take mitochondria, it's a third of your body weight. Okay, so you have a lot of them. And they're the guys in your cells that take oxygen and sugar and make energy with it. So without these mitochondria, you would die within moments. This is how, this is the batteries of the cell. 
So what one of the benefits and the ways that laser works to heal cells and tissues is it has a very good positive effect on mitochondrial function. This was a slide that Dr. Weldon created. You can find it on his website. Um, this is showing the laser therapy having a positive effect on mitochondria and then the cell's core, uh, the core regenerative intelligence, turning that on in the cell. So it's basically turning genes on, gene expression. And then you have a an improvement in the cellular regenerative abilities of the depleted ear cells. Stressed, overstressed, depleted ear cells. The batteries are very low. You recharge the batteries. Then the cell says, hey, what kind of housekeeping do I need to do? And it starts to go through its repair cycle. That's kind of it in a nutshell. So there are studies showing evidence of positive effects of laser for the treatment of many ear disorders, especially ringing in the ears, which is tinnitus, and um, hearing loss. This is a um, picture of our clinic. There's a patient receiving uh, laser to the ear. Um, here's a study, effects of low-level laser therapy on the cochlear hair cell recovery after gentamicin-induced ototoxicity. So that's the antibiotic that you never want anybody to administer to you. Um, and so it says the, the large number of hair cells was significantly larger in the gentamicin <coughs> plus laser group, which means that, so they had two groups and the ones that they gave gentamicin and then did laser on afterwards, there was a lot more stem cell, um, hair cells that survived. That's kind of the gist of that article. Now, Research shows that mammalian cochlear hair cells do not regenerate. So what I'm talking to you about today is considered the impossible in modern medicine. Lower vertebrates, so mammals can't regenerate their inner ears, but lower vertebrates, such as amphibians, reptiles, and birds, can spontaneously regrow hair cells under normal conditions and or after damage. Hair cell regeneration allows birds to hear again. These findings provide hope that if hair cell regeneration were to be stimulated in mammals, the new hair cells would be sufficient to restore hearing function. So um, regeneration in birds. So I think this fact is what has really gotten scientists in different areas and pockets to start looking at regenerating uh, the inner ear and that hey, this has got to be possible because if birds and reptiles and so forth can do it, then it's got to be a matter of the right, putting the right circumstances to create these gene expressions that we talked about with the laser to get these. And we're going to kind of get into it, but remember I, I showed you those supporting cells? So the, the, the whole thing, what happens with birds is those supporting cells turn into hair cells. So... These are some treatment options for tinnitus. You've got special um, hearing instruments and hearing aids that do masking and so forth. A lot of them are doing something called habituation, where they're taking that frequency and they're exposing you to it, which is ultimately kind of wearing out those hair cells so that they're, they stop even making any type of signal to the brain. And these other sound devices are similar. And then, of course, just counseling, basically getting you to not think about it, you know, don't stress about it, concentrate on other things, do some meditation. I mean, these things aren't really going to treat the inner ear, are they? So this is another study um, on the management of cochlear tinnitus. And they report here, no adverse events were reported during two weeks of 10 interventions. So they did 10 lasers, 20 minutes a day five days a week, and the tinnitus loudness significantly decreased over time in the group treated with the laser. And this is another um, study, low-level laser effect in treatment of patients with intractable tinnitus due to <clears throat> sensorial neural hearing loss. 
And the conclusion was that low-level laser therapy is effective for the treatment of tinnitus caused by sensorineural hearing loss, and its impact may be reduced over time. Um, so this is an audiogram. So we showed this earlier, right? This, so if your hearing is up here, so this is the decibels that the machine has to be turned up to for you to click a button. How many people here have had a hearing test done? Should be most, most, okay. So again, this is the low frequency, this is the high frequency. And so the, the lower you get down here, the, high, the higher the machine has to be turned on. So this is a patient that I treated. Um, this is Ed. And so this is the pre-audiometric test that we did on Ed. And if you notice on the left ear, at 6,000 and 8,000 hertz, I turned the machine up as high as it would go and he still didn't press the button. So I don't know how bad it really was. It was somewhere below this. So this is the post treatment, which is about two months later. The patient. This is a patient's first test after they've gone through treatment two to three times a week. And so these are the levels of decibels. So at this level here, he had 15 decibels of hearing improvement because he was at 45. I had to turn the machine up to 45 decibels here. We only had to turn it to um, 30. So um, at, at this level here, he had 30 decibels of hearing improvement. This is at 2,000. So he was all the way down to 80, and now he's at 40. But what was really amazing was what happened on that left ear with the higher frequency. I mean, you had 50 plus um, decibels of improvement. But um, this patient's uh, tinnitus was greatly reduced. Um, this is a patient where it was primarily hearing loss, and he got out of hearing aids. So you see that his hearing loss was, it was, he was a very good candidate to actually get out of hearing aids, and that's what happened. It's really remarkable results up in the high where he got actually 20 decibels, you know, and then 15. The average that we'll see on patients is about 10 decibels with the first series of treatments. That's on average on most patients. And then I've got a video I want to show you. Let's see if it's going to play. The fight tonight started about four years ago. Uh, it just all of a sudden, like most do, and it came on. And I've been searching for some relief to do it. I've tried acupuncture. I've tried a lot of different things, diets, certain things. And uh, I read about, I happened to be out here and read about you. So I came in to do this. And so far, I think it has really helped me. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, my hearing has gotten better. I think my tinnitus. The volume seems to be getting lower, mm -hmm. so I'm hoping over a period of time that will continue to go down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At first I was apprehensive, but for no reason because it was not invasive, it was actually relaxing. Mm -hmm. um, and the amazing thing was at the beginning when I had a knee which was inflamed from arthritis and, a, and uh, worn ligaments, and we did tried it there, and it was gone by the next day, and I hadn't been able to walk or do steps three previous weeks. Mm -hmm. So that was amazing. But then as time went on, I noticed one week my sinuses seemed to be draining a lot, mm -hmm. another week my tinnitus was constant, and mm -hmm. then they all went away. So right now I'm hoping it'll stay because I can bend over. Mm -hmm. What like, happened when you were bending over before? I'd be dizzy and maybe fall. Mm -hmm. And right now, also, um, my balance, my husband has noticed mm -hmm. that that seems to have improved greatly. Mm -hmm. And so we're pleased. So. He had tubes in his ears twice. When uh, The first time was at four years and then again at... And we really debated about that because, you know, they, they lose hearing from doing that, putting tubes in. Mm -hmm. But it seemed like the only option right then. We feel really blessed to have found laser therapy. We are really impressed with what he has gained. So really glad we were doing what we're doing. And yeah, the audiologist was really impressed 
she was she had she said she has goosebumps down her back she has never seen hearing improvement and she was really impressed with it so that really spurred us on to keep on with the laser therapy he actually turned his hearing aid the audiologist told me the other day he turned his hearing aid down 10 decibels he can do that by himself the last time he was here mm -hmm. so he did that after the first treatment after you told us to turn him down so he was he's going without 10 decibels ever since then she didn't even know that so she, we've got to go in and turn him down some more now this time and see what what he can do because he he has different settings on there you know mm -hmm. he can go lower than if he wants yeah so we're kind of excited to do that and, I mean I would just love to see four and five year olds have this and go through school and hear better yeah me too well, we got to get the word out yeah. so right now this is the only center in the in the U S that anyone can go to besides if they want to travel to Europe. I was very surprised to find that I could hear quite a bit better. I didn't know exactly what to expect. I thought, so when I came here, you lay on the, the laser, the laser <laughs> <laughs> in toward your ear, uh -huh. and you do that for, you just lay there, and you have glasses that you wear so that the laser doesn't affect your eyes, uh -huh. and uh, you lay there, they have some beautiful pictures that you can look at. Uh -huh. um, and you lay very still for half an hour for one, the first ear. And then they come in and they turn you around and you have the, the right ear done. Uh -huh. And it, it's, it was nothing like what I expected. Yeah. And I, I've just, I, I've had, I have a lot of problems with the left ear because uh, hearing mm -hmm. and we've done an autometric before mm -hmm. and after mm -hmm. and I have found that I have improvement mm -hmm. and I'm very pleased with it. Well you were telling me a little bit about the you went back to your ear doctor and they cleaned it out and like... They did. Uh, they cleaned out the hearing aids and um, because I had I felt like the left ear was before I started the luminant, um, I, I felt like, you know, I really wasn't hearing well at all, and it showed up on my autometric that you did, mm -hmm. that I wasn't hearing well in the left ear. So when I took the hearing aids back, and um, I hadn't been wearing them, and the doctor cleaned them all out, uh, cleaned out wax and so forth that needs to be done, and I was very surprised to find that I could hear quite a bit better. Yeah. And I thought, wow, I'm anxious to come back and see what your autometric uh, mm -hmm. test shows. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm very pleased. Very yeah. pleased. Well, thanks for watching. We have many testimonials like that one here at Advanced Rejuvenation that we're very proud of. And if you've been to lots of specialists and you've walked away with zero answers, this might be the answer that you're looking for. And if you believe that rejuvenation is possible, then consider it to be within your reach. Bye for now.